completely different subject. Uh, the House Armed Services Subcommittee on uh, Oversight and Investigations, as we may know, last week held its ninth hearing on the subject of Benghazi. Seven of them have been classified, as was last week's, where the witness was the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Dempsey. Um, I know that you have covered the particular subject matter before in this briefing room, but it has resurfaced in a fresh context uh, as uh, receiving fresh scrutiny from these House Armed Services Committee investigators, and therefore I thought it fair to give you another chance to address it. They uh, accept the White House's conclusion that no military rescue or response could possibly have been achieved in Benghazi that night because the posturing of U.S. military assets around the world was so poor on that night. Um, and this has led That's the statement of the House Republican Subcommittee Chairman, correct? Well, that is their, 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 mm -hmm. their conclusion. And uh, this has led them to refocus their attention on a press release that your office issued mm -hmm. on September 10, the day before the attacks. It was very brief. It was four sentences. But it essentially stated that the President on that day, September 10, 2011, had met with key national security principles uh, to assure that as the eve of the 11th anniversary of 9-11 approached, uh, steps were being taken to assure the protection of U.S. personnel and assets. Mm -hmm. um, it alluded further to meetings that John Brennan at that time had held. Um, the House investigators have determined that General Carter Hamm, the combatant commander with jurisdiction over Libya, was not consulted as part of those sessions. I wonder if you could tell us more about uh, what those meetings entailed, who the participants were, uh, how closely vetted that uh, or thoroughly vetted that press release was, and whether you, the White House might be willing to make available either to congressional investigators and or to the public uh, the emails, the memos, and other sort of paperwork that was associated with the of that press release. James, the President of the United States, as uh, did his predecessor, received a briefing from his national security team uh, principles of that team on uh, the eve of the anniversary of 9-11, on the actions that were being taken uh, both uh, here in the homeland and around the world uh, in preparation for potential uh, threats. If your question is, was the preparation for or were, was there adequate security at the diplomatic facility in Benghazi to protect the Americans there? The answer is categorically no, as the President said after the attack in Benghazi, which is why he said uh, he would uh, make sure that his administration did everything it could to bring those to justice who killed four Americans. And he endorsed the uh, effort undertaken by former Secretary Clinton to uh, set up an independent accountability review board uh, to investigate the uh, situation both before, during, and after the Benghazi, Benghazi attacks with a particular focus on the question of security. And they found uh, problems with security and made a series of recommendations that Secretary Clinton and her successor, Secretary Kerry, have uh, addressed in full, every single one of them. So. Uh, I, I'm not sure I understand the question focused on a, a press release, which I think I probably also discussed here, as I think my predecessors of both administrations <laughs> have done, which is that because of the nature of the anniversary, uh, there are decisions uh, made uh, in anticipation of potential threats. Uh, but it is clear, because four Americans died on that day, that there was not adequate security. And that uh, was revealed in the Accountability Review Board. It was revealed in the uh, testimony at 13 congressional hearings that this administration has participated in, with 40 staff briefings and 25,000 pages of documents. Efforts by that committee that you mentioned, I believe it's that committee, to uh, denigrate the credibility of the Accountability Review Board uh, were rejected quite uh, powerfully by the independent inspector general uh, who uh, said that there were no signs of bias uh, in the accountability review board, uh, a board which, by the way, was headed up by former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Admiral Mullen, and one of the most uh, 
admired diplomats who served presidents of both parties, uh, Ambassador Pickering. Um, the president remains committed uh, to ensuring that every step is taken uh, that we can take as an administration and with Congress to enhance the security of our uh, personnel serving overseas, recognizing that by serving their country they of course are in some places and in some cases putting themselves at risk. He is committed to doing everything that we can as a country and a government to bring to justice those who are responsible for the deaths of four Americans. And those are the issues that he believes are most important. Uh, your, your reply to me focused on the work of the ARB which as a statutory issue does not have jurisdiction over military posture and deployment. Um, and your answer to me also emphasized the question of security at the consulate itself. But the peace of Benghazi uh, over which the House Armed Services Subcommittee that I'm talking mm -hmm. about does have jurisdiction uh, is not with respect to the arms work mm -hmm. or with respect to uh, the DS facilities on site at Benghazi. Mm -hmm. It is with respect to the posturing of the military um, in a volatile time around the world, which, as we now know from retrospect, was so poor as to make rescue and yeah, remedy impossible. You, the the, so the poor statement is a reflection of, a, of an assessment made by Republicans uh, who have, as you know, uh, attempted, unfortunately, to make this a partisan issue. And I would question. simply say when it comes to, uh, and I know that we're creating an exchange here for Fox, and, and uh, I'm mindful of that. But allow me to suggest that questions about the posturing of defense forces uh, are usually better addressed at the Pentagon. My, my question to you, Jay, is first of all, what we're engaged in here is not for Fox, it's for the record. Um, and the, the, the fact that the posturing was um, such that it made remedy or rescue in that situation impossible mm -hmm. is not a conclusion solely of the House Armed Services Committee or of Republicans. It's a ev self-evident fact. So all I'm trying to ask you is, with respect to these meetings that mm -hmm. the President had with key national security principals the day before those attacks, um, how is it possible that uh, you can maintain that adequate steps were taken vis-a-vis -vis force posture um, by the Commander-in-Chief and his aides um, when, in fact, the posture is now universally acknowledged to have been such that it made remedy or rescue impossible. Again, James, I think I said very clearly that there was not adequate security to protect those four Americans. Uh, and, and the President has been absolutely clear and forthright about that, as have the numerous uh, investigators who have looked into this, including, of course, the Accountability Review Board. I think when it comes to how the U.S. military uh, positions its assets, again, that is a question best answered by uh, the Department of Defense and by commanders. But you get no argument here from the suggestion that there was not adequate security there. That is self-evident, as you said. Uh, and uh, the, pre the, the administration's cooperation with investigations here has been exhaustive. It includes, obviously, the full cooperation with the Accountability Review Board, uh, whose credibility has, unfortunately, despite the stature and independence of those who uh, were in charge of it, been questioned by partisans on Capitol Hill. Uh, and I think that this reflects, unfortunately, the kind of you know, partisan gamesmanship that so frustrates the American people when we need to be focused on making sure that adequate security is provided at our diplomatic facilities around the world so that our personnel serving abroad are protected, making sure that uh, the intelligence and resources uh, that we can apply are being applied to bring to justice those who uh, are responsible for the deaths of four Americans, uh, and making sure that uh, we continue to provide the resources necessary to our military uh, and the rest of our national security apparatus uh, to allow it to uh, keep us safe. Uh, and, and, you know, that's what this president's committed to, and that's reflected in uh, everything he does and says about this issue. Would I think. Would you be willing to make any of those documents associated with that press release available, as you did with the Susan Rice talking points? James, I think we're done here. Thanks.